Got it. Hold on, hold on. Show me.
pas bloc en tenue avec un.
It's lonely to see so many friends and family today to celebrate Aunt Rosie's life. So many have come with flowers and pictures and stories. She was the sweetest person I know and touched all those persons she met with her easy smile, welcoming generous ways. This is a time for us all to remember her never ending smile, her cheeky laugh, her cheerful and loving ways, and the good times we share. Somehow she managed to impart her values and standards to me in a subtle way, helping me grow into the her, continue to grow and exhibit the lessons she taught me as I continue on my own journey in life. It is so heartbreaking to see you both go at once. Diaphragm have made her laugh when she was sad. <laughs> Sorry. It is heartbreaking to see you both go at once. Diaphragm have made her laugh when she was sad. He picked her up when she was down and cheered her on through difficult journeys. She was eternal grateful to have such a special man in her life. Diaphragm was also a dedicated husband to his beautiful wife, Auntie Rosie. Their relationship seemed so perfect and they made marriage look so effortless. Even though their union had lasted for over 50 years, they would do everything together, including shopping, cooking, eating, laundry, and going for their annual vacation. Moreover, he was such a handsome man. They really looked good together. And to Rosie, on the other hand, there was no, there was no she without that friend. The bond they share was unbreakable. It is no wonder he couldn't hold on much no longer crying, no crying. Four days after. He just couldn't watch her go and not be with her. Their marriage really symbolized till death do us part. And Rosie Hart is where her husband is and where love story began. If we could all live the way they live and live each and love each other, we would have truly experienced what is true love. I remember the last time I came down here to see you, he really, really talked much. He didn't talk much. He got the stroke. After he got the stroke, I, I said to him that time, do you remember us? That's me and my sister. He said, yes, it's Lori and I'm Terry. I said, wow, you talked. I thought you, they said you didn't talk anymore. And he gave me the biggest smile. And he said, when are you guys coming back? I said, soon. That soon never came. But I guess that was his final goodbye. Final goodbye. My message to you all in legacy and honor of Auntie Rosie and Di Frank is that we should be mindful of each other. Be mindful how we speak and how we do and what we do to each other. Live in love. Love each other as Guy Frank and Auntie Rosie love each other. The answer is love today. Auntie Rosie, Guy Frank, Doreen and I will miss your guidance and your laughter. We will hold you in our hearts forever. Rest in perfect peace. Walk good. Until we meet again, some sweet day. Thank you. That was a lovely tribute to um to mom and dad. It's it's everywhere that Terry says. Um, so we're gonna have the reading of the obituaries. Um, so Candy, are you ready? Um, so we go first. Um, I'm going to introduce Francesca Morris McFarlane. She's one of the um, granddaughters uh, and one of the granddaughters that, um, that lived with mom and dad for a long time, so they nurtured her. And so I'm going to welcome her to the stage to be the obituary for mom.
morning, everyone. How are you doing? Good. To everything, there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a, plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to keep and a time to cast away. Rosetta Anderson Gale, otherwise known as Rosie Antesi, Rosie Gale, was born in Belfield, Manchester on February 9, 1947 to Edward Gale and Lucille Lemus. Rosetta was the last child of Edward and Lucille, 11 children. She was raised by her father and older siblings as her mom, as her mother died when she was only eight years old. She was known to be shy, but feisty. She later attended um, Clarendon College as a high school student. She often talked about how she had to walk and run to catch the bus to get home on time to prevent being disciplined by her father. At the age of 19, she had her first child and son, Hugh Freeman. As a young mom, she left Manchester to seek employment opportunity in Kingston, Jamaica. However, she shared that it was hard leaving Hugh as she so so she decided to move back to Manchester. In May 1969, she fell in love with a five feet handsome man, Franklin Anderson from Mason River Clarendon, and that's my grandfather, the backbone of this family. She said it was love at first sight, and I knew it was because she never left his side. Um, Rosetta and Frank, began their life journey when they never left each other's side. As you can see, even death, they are together. From Rosetta and Frank's union, they have three sons, Derek, Garth, Owen, and four daughters, Faye, Dolores, my mom, Nikisha, and Tracy Ann. Right. right here with me today. <laughs> Derek, <laughs> she was a disciplinarian of the family. Rosetta's lifetime dream was to become a nurse. However, where she attended nursing school in Kinston for two years, then decided to become a full-time mom and wife. She loved to listen to music, dance, play lute and even bingo, cooking, baking, and not to mention by her cash back numbers. <laughs> she is a coming labor right who never misses an election to cast her vote. She is known to be an advocate of learning as she instilled in her kids and grandkids that the only way out of poverty was to get your education. Her home was open to anyone who might have face to stay or even to come and sit on a rock to her counseling sessions. She loved her kids equally, yet differently. She always ensured that a meal was available for the family, whether it was her famous chocho with black pepper and dumplings, yes, right. <laughs> or her beef bone soup. Yes, I'm <laughs> Rosetta spoiled her grandkids and disciplined her kids. The grandkids could get the grandkids could get away with any wrongdoing, and her famous saying would be, "Bring the picnic, come and we we'll with them." Once they came to live with her, that's it. On the dreaded day of March 20, 2020, Rosetta had a severe stroke which caused her to lose motor functioning of her left side. She was confined to a bed and a wheelchair. During the last 18 months, she has had multiple hospitalizations and medical treatment, but still found the strength to call, text, 
send boys, military, kings, and her grandkids to check up on them. Rosetta lost her, Rosetta lost her long battle with hypertension and diabetes on September 5th, 2021, at Mandeville Regional Hospital. One of the most important things in my grandmother's life was looking out for the well-being of her family. She had spent numerous days and nights to make sure each and every one of us were doing good, that we were following the right path as well. She has encouraged us all to be the best person in whatever that we do. She has always expressed the importance of getting an education. And I know for a fact, she was always proud of my accomplishments and you all. Rosetta was always supportive of our dreams and knew the right words to say whenever we needed. She knew how to keep a smile on her face. Due to her witty personality, she would always make us laugh, even through the toughest times. Grandma was a no-nonsense woman who didn't stand for wrongdoings. Through it all, she has managed to be strong through her illnesses. She stuck out to see all her grandkids grow up and achieve their goals. And I'm pretty sure she's looking down on all of her grandkids on her siblings, and she's very proud. She became our confidant, a person we could share our thoughts, our concerns. She was strong enough to raise all her eight children with the little that she had alongside her husband, Franklin Anderson. She would always put others before herself and make sure others were good. She was a selfless and genuine woman, and she was a strong black woman. My grandmother has always influenced me to be a better woman for myself and my family. And I will remember a few lines that she will always say to me, is to take care of yourself, Nisha, do as much as you can, because times weigh on no one. Proud of you, Grandma. Grandma, I love you so much, and you will always have a place in our heart. We will always make your spirit live on in our heart and mind. We will continue to make you proud and carry the Anderson name with pride and diligence. We will keep the peace and create a great life for other generations to come. Grandma, you are a great woman and I aspire to be the most humble person I can. And I will carry your name with grace and pride. It's hard to say goodbye. We wish we had more time. And perhaps during the time, we have spent more of it together. We wish that so much of our life had not been lost to our illness, that things could have been different for her and for us. While we know that she's at peace and that her struggles are at an end, there is pain and sadness. But even though she's gone, she has left the legacy of her love and perseverance. The way she touched our lives will remain, and I ask you to keep those memories alive by sharing them with me and one another. In sharing the joy and pain together today, may we lessen the pain and remember more clearly the joy. A wife, a mother, a grandma too. This is the legacy we have from you. You taught us love and how to fight. You gave us strength and you gave us might. A stronger person will be hard to find, and in your heart, you will always be kind. You fought for all of us in one way or another, not just a wife, not just as a wife, not just as a mother. For all of us, you gave your best, and now the time has come for you to rest. So go in peace. You earned your sleep. Your love in your heart will in ex eternally keep. As grandma, your mom, friend, aunt, cousin, sister, whatever she was to you, would say, 
every days, weeks since they are passing to think about what I should say today. And I don't think the time will allow for me to say all I could. But I'm going to do it as short and as I can. Just talk about the life of these two great, great, great people that came together. So, when I think about my mother and father, there are, there's, this, there's this quote that just came in my mind. And what they truly represent is love breaking barriers for greatness. Love breaking, breaking barriers for greatness. And that, those words exemplify who they are, how they live their lives. Love is the root of who they are, and it continues as, as we see until then. I was going through, um, something, sorry, I was going through something, um, and I found, I, I always, I always buy a lot of cards. And uh, those who know me, I give very good cards. But I found this card that I bought from my mom. It was years ago, and she kept it. And she taped it up. So this one I choose to read today, because I know I feel her spirit and it touches her. So I'm going to read this for her. And the card says, Mama Love can do it all. Mama Love gives us life then help us make something of it. It teaches and preaches and shows by example. It forgives us for more than we can even remember doing. Mama love is patient. Mama love takes us by the hand, leads and guides, sorry. Mama love takes us by the hand, leads and guides, pushes and cheers. Mama love believes in us and in our bright future because she's paving the way straight up to its door. Mama love is strong. Mama's love doesn't wait for a holiday to give us gifts that mean the most. It's there all day, every day. It cooks and nurses and teaches and makes every, every other job in the world easy. Mama, Mama's love knows when to hold on or to let go. Mama love always bring us home. <sighs> this is what um, um, the cards that I wrote. I say, it says, being a good mama means love, love, and more love. Through the happy times, the tense time, the growing, living, learning time, you know because you've done it all. I'm a living proof of that, and I'm here to tell you about it, and to thank you for it with love from the bottom of my heart. I gave my mom this card in 2011, and I read it today. I did a testament for my love for my parents. And I'm going to read another card that from my father and what makes a beautiful father. The warmth in his heart for his family, his welcoming house at the door, or how happy he is just to see you and spend time together once more. The way he cares so much about you and thinks of you often each day, and that way, no matter how old you are, you may be he worries that you'll be okay. His pride in the things you, you have accomplished, his interest in things that you do, and the way that he offers such love and support for the dreams most important to you. What makes a beautiful father is, is the love that he shares from start and the lifetime of family memory he made that always be dear to our hearts. So I'm just sharing, those are two cards, one from my father, one from my mom, that was, one was, that was 2015, the other one was 2012. And to say, as I mentioned, that um, the quote, love, my mom and dad met on May 23rd, 1969, right at the Belfield School. And ever since then, they are inseparable. 
they never did anything without each other. And they, within our family, all we had was love. We grew up very, very poor. Just imagine a man who works only construction job. Construction job is not something that you do on a regular. You don't have a nine to five. But he's able to take care of his family and stay. I've never, I have never heard my father say, oh, Rose, you have another man. Or my mother said, frankly, you have another woman. They are together all the time. I've never remembered a time when my father wasn't there or my mother. And that love, we transition into our own family. If one dumpling we have, my father used to go out and work. And so people know that he goes and do drinking sometimes. But let me tell you, he be out there drinking and dancing, but he coming home to crackers and coffee for us to eat. No matter what time of night, we sit up and wait. He's not going to eat it all, he's going to give us one piece of time, and we all sit and eat. That's what exemplifies a great man and a great love. When my mom, when my mom passed, my biggest fear was to see my father transition right behind her. Everybody who knows both of them, the first thing people say, Lord, I don't think Frank can go make it without Rosie. Because he does, my father doesn't do anything without his wife. And that is something I respect about him. Their relationship, some people don't understand what love is. People think like love is the fallacy of diamonds and pearls and roses and all that. That's not what love is about. My mother and father shows up what love's about. It's about riding with that person. Whether your friend, your family member, whoever it is. Riding with a person through thick and thin. Not when things look good, you're going to come and say, hey, yeah, I'm here. But when through the thick and thin, that's what it's about. And that's, what the, that's the kind of love that I have. And that's the kind of love that my parents exemplify. And I, 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 I look forward to nurture that kind of relationship. When you talk about breaking barriers, Again, poverty is a poverty is a tra a traumatic experience for many persons. We've gone to poverty, but we came out on top. And as Francesca says, one of the things that our parents always say that education is the only way that you can change the world. And I carry that with me throughout my entire life journey. In order for you to change yourself and change where you want to go, you first have to invest in yourself. Whether it's going to a college, whether it's just do learning a skill, because my philosophy, and that's one of the things that my father says, teach him, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And how you can be able to be independent and to do yourself. Is, and, I'm, and I'm encouraging young persons here today, and as someone who is very big on education, stay focused, do what you need to do in school, be better than where you come from. Where you start in life, that doesn't mean that's where you're gonna end. Break barriers, break barriers. Use that love for self, for your community, for your family, to break barriers so that you could be better than the next generation to come. And as someone who I champion to make sure that this family takes it to the next level. And as Francesca said, we're going to continue to work together as a family, despite sometimes every family goes through thick and thin from time to time. But we're going to break that barrier. We're going to pull it together and show our parents that bless, it was worth it for the work. Because remember, out of the eight kids, we all are alive and here today. Out of the 27 grandchildren, we're all alive and here today. Out of the four great grandchildren, we're all alive and here today. This is a testimony that our parents have run the race for us. It's up to us to continue that journey. The final thing, as, as I said, the quote is greatness. Oh, we have so many great things to celebrate within our family. From whence we came, and I always, wherever I go in life, I talk about where I'm from. I've never forget our dumpling and butter and the one leaf yam and butter and fry, fry up chicken back aisle. Remember those days. But guess what? We graduate from those days because we work hard to get to the next level. And so there are so many great things to celebrate within our family. Within our family circle, thank God, none of my brothers and sisters are in prison. None of them, all of them are alive and well. We all do good. Give God praises. Yes, we have to. And we have to give applause to mommy and daddy for holding love for us. They, they took that journey and when they took that journey for us right to the last job. Many parents cannot say that today. Some parents have to bury their kids or their grandchildren or something. They never had to do that. And I salute my mother and father to ride this race, this journey for us. And so we owe them. We owe them the rights, the responsibility, and the moral obligation 
to continue this journey, to build this family, and to grow, and to, and to be an example and a role model for all, and all the persons. And we all know Franklin and Rosetta, how they always reaching out to people, people always reach to them, because they have something to give back to society. And I, for one, will always continue to give back to society, because I, I, when I described my mom and dad, I said I have the best of both of them in me, and I will continue to do so with our family and our love friend, our friends together to continue to nurture this greatness. There's so much in us that we can celebrate, and today we're celebrating the life of Franklin and Rosetta along with all their great children, children who are doing great things and grandchildren. And um, I say this finally, and we, the quote that, that, that says, "Mom, word always, God is God." That word always, love is love. There is no love without God. God is love. And I, I, I'm, I'm leaving this, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving a, a final quote to you all. Please, love is not in number. Love is not in color. Love is not in shape. Love is not in money. Love is not in fame. The cheapest thing in life is love, because it's so easy to come. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to buy it either. You have it in you. And if you have God in you, then that love in you shall manifest itself. Search within yourself and find that love to love each other. Guess what? Though the days, we have to break a generation, and I have to say this today, we have to break a generation curse. And we have to recognize that we, if what we do today can change for tomorrow. We may not live to see the change happen, but sow that seed. Sow that seed of love. If, 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 if your friends, your family, your, your co-worker, whoever is doing you wrong, no need to carry them in your heart. No need to carry bickering for years and years and go talk to them. Let it go, let it be. God is in the best, man. Let it be, because life is too short. And um, Gandhi, Gandhi says, Carrying hate is like drinking poison and expect the next person to die. Carrying hate, carrying hate is like drinking poison and expect the next person to die. So therefore, if someone hurts you, and guess what, we're all human beings. We say stuff that we shouldn't say or do things, and sometimes we do it unconsciously, not even know that we're hurting other people. But if you know you hurt your brother, your sister, hey, I'm sorry, I, teach me how to do things differently. But don't walk away and say you should know better, but you know better too, do better. If you know better, do better. If you know right, do right. Love is love, God is God. Thank you. And then we will start beginning by saying, with assurance in the Lord. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I bless the body of Rosetta with holy water. I bless the body of Franklin with holy water that would cause their baptism of which St. Paul writes. All of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him. So as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life for if we be united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of their baptism, Rosetta and Franklin put on Christ in the day of Christ's coming. May they be clothed with glory. Yeah. 
heart be troubled, ye believe in God, be also in me. In my Father's house are many persons. If, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto, unto myself, that where I am, where you need be also, and whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thompson says, Unto him, Lord, we know not whether the ghost and how can we know the way? Jesus unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Thank you very much, Casey. Alright, so now Father. I know the rain is coming, so we're gonna move swiftly. If you look on the front of your program, it says Thanksgiving service for the life, the life. That means we don't, we are not going to celebrate death. So if we are going to celebrate life, we are not talking about Frank and Rosetta. We have to have a lot about them. But you know what? They are okay. They have got their turn reward. It's our life we are going to celebrate and see what we are going to do with what they have taught us. In the middle of your program, Every time you look, you see a four-letter word. What's that word? Love. Love. And you think, oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Oh, yes, so that, what is that? That's fine. But it's not about looking at the word. It's about living love. How do you live that? They showed you how. They were together, loved each other in life and they're also together in death. So somehow we're going to find a way to love the persons who we live with. You're not here to talk about life. Not to talk about life. Life is a feeling emotion. You're here to talk about love. And therefore, if you're going to do that, You've got to understand how Frank and Rosetta lived. They didn't always get along. Yes, they had difficulties. And so they're the same for us. If we're going to live with someone, yes, we're going to have difficulties because we're different people. But that doesn't mean we can't love them. We have to love the God in them. Because all people are made in the image and likeness of God. And so our hearts now must have some space. Frank and Rosetta showed us how to open our hearts so that we can accommodate the ones who are close to us. At this time, I'm going to invite all the family members, all the family members of Frank and Rosetta. That's the, the immediate family. Just to stand wherever you are, stand wherever you are, because we're going to pray for you. Close enough. If you don't like the person, put your hands. 
in the name of Jesus. All the family members, are you hearing? Are you here? So let us pray for them. Lord our God, come and be present to this family, the family of Franklin and Rosetta. Minister to them in their needs. Touch their hearts and fill it with love. Remove anger, hatred, bitterness. Replace it with the word of love. Comfort them in their loss. Hold them in their sorrow. And sustain them through their grief. And hold them with all your love that they may rest with your arms. Watch over their sleep and take their hand each morning as they face a new day. So bless the end of the family now and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
our brother and sister here in Sibian peace. On your way to the Amateur Story, yo, for you are the resident lawyer. Then they will face the world, you face the face, and your light will see light. I know the splendor of God will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Um, excuse me, gentlemen, 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 you will. You want, you want, you, you mind to give me a man?
big song. To refresh yourselves, who is it? Daddy Michael, right? It's Daddy Michael, Lady Master Father, Daddy Michael, big of yourself. Take a better one, yeah? Enjoy this, take a better one. Make continue. Sonic Creed Live, we give you everything, you get me? Last Sonic gives you everything. Remember, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Last Sonic Creed, alright? Alright. So, so look how more you see this one up, live and direct. Uh -huh.
the bag. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we get the Turn it around like this. Hey, let me get to like. Turn it like this. Rest in peace, my uncle. Uh, mm -hmm. My auntie. My auntie. <laughs> auntie, la, uncle, auntie. You know, see, I two weeks before they take down my, my plant, plant me, I come up here and through lockdown, I don't get to see them. Come on, sir. 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 That's what I'm going to do. Right, good. It's nice. So, tell me what you have here. What is this? Fried fish? Escobit? Oh, fried. No, it looks like escobit. Fried fish, fried chicken, rice, and things are pasta. Real Jamaican food, right? Sweet treats. Wow. Mama, you love it. Sweet treats, cakes, and cookies. Yeah. Those are for you all? The original <laughs> All right. Everybody, I'm here to ask them. 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 Ever